Let me now talk about the so-called left heart congenital problems that can cause pulmonary hypertension. So here I'm talking not about the shunt lesions, but the defects of the left heart, which can eventually cause post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. What are they? First of all, coarctation. Here is a beautiful study that shows such a coarctation. You see that there is obstruction here in the descending part of the aorta. And in such a situation, we have pressure overload of the left ventricle, and this can cause failure of the left ventricle and post-capillary pulmonary hypertension in a later stage usually. How do you diagnose it? By using a suprasternal view with the display of the aortic arch and the descending aorta. By using color, you can localize where the defect is at the region of the high turbulent flow. Then you can use continuous wave Doppler as well to look at the degree of obstruction. The next pathology is a pathology of the mitral valve, a congenital abnormality. Here, for example, the so-called double orifice mitral valve. It actually looks very much like a rheumatic mitral stenosis, only that it's a congenital problem where you have two orifices. And the hemodynamic problem here is very similar to rheumatic mitral stenosis as well. It's obstruction, it's stenosis. And then you have an increase in left atrial filling pressures, and again, post-capillary pulmonary hypertension, which can affect the right heart. Another, again, rather rare pathology is the so-called core triatriatum sinister. What is it? Well, it's a defect where there's a septation in the left atrium so that you have two chambers, actually, which communicate. And depending on the size of this communication, you can have elevated pressures, again, in the distal part here, or let's put it this way, in the pulmonary venous flow part of uh, the left atrium, thereby again causing pulmonary hypertension in the right ventricle. Of course, it depends here on the size of this defect very much, uh, whether or not uh, it is significant and whether or not something has to be done. In this case, the right ventricle is completely normal and the defect here was large so that there is practically free communication and it does not really affect the patient in any way. But this would be another potential cause of pulmonary hypertension caused by the left heart. One other defect would be congenital pulmonary venous stenosis, which similarly, as all the defects I listed here, causes post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. So these would be the defects which are associated with a problem with the right heart, but actually the left heart has the main problem.